hello everybody welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations so we are discussing about uh, the module of solid whenever it will be immersed in the uh, liquid then how the drag force even uh, what will be the terminal uh, velocity and also uh, what will be the you know lift force and then uh, what are the different regimes of that uh, flow uh, where that drag force will be applied and also how to uh, calculate the terminal velocity whenever that particle diameter will be known and also the particle diameter to be calculated when uh, terminal velocity will be known uh, at any flow regimes. In this lecture we will try to learn more about this when uh, the particle uh, will be that uh, falling under the gravity and also under the action of interaction with the other particles. So in that case these particles will not be uh, free of uh, other particles. So these particles uh, uh, will be falling downward under the gravity and uh, also their uh, parallel uh, uh, interaction uh, among the particles as well as fluid and in that case what will be the relative velocity at which that particles will be falling downward and whenever these particles will be falling downward with this interaction uh, there will be a hindered uh, of this particle uh, to settle down or falling downward so that uh, under this hindrance force whenever particles will be falling downward with a relative velocity that velocity will be called as settling velocity so here we will try to learn about that settling velocity so this present lecture will uh, cover that hindered settling velocity what is that and in a bash settling or sedimentation how that relative velocity of that particles will be falling downward and also there will be some interaction between uh, that uh, solid particles with the other particles and because of which there will be a some you know effective velocity or it is called relative velocity how that relative velocity will be you know related with that particle concentration uh, in the you know suspension or uh, you know slurry so there will be a certain relationship between that you know uh, relative velocity and the terminal velocity along with that you know uh, at a certain you know that particle concentration of that slurry that relation will be called as that research on jackie relationship that will also here uh, we will learn so here you will see that uh, the settling of a suspension of particles uh, in this case uh, a suspension what is that suspension a suspension is basically a heterogeneous mixer in which you will see that solid like particles very fine particles you can say settled out of a solvent like phases so in a solvent like phases that very fine particles will be settled down so this is basically a heterogeneous mixer which is called a suspension as an example you can say the dust in air is a suspension so in that case the sand suspended in the air also you will see that some sand particles or other uh, particles you will see that suspended uh, in the river so that is also a you know example of this suspension so air dust dust different types of dust also you will see that in carbon car particle even other types of you know uh, very fine uh, you know uh, dry particles also will be suspended in the air so this dust in air is a suspension as well as the sand or river like brahmaputra ganga you will see that there might be water that will be that particles will be suspended in the river water so these are called suspension now if the particles are too small to you know ever settle they are said to form a colloid so in that case you will see that sometimes in the suspension the very very fine particles will be settling down very slowly okay and then that type of particles uh, of course will be having a certain range of size maybe one nanometer to one micrometer in range so those will be called as colloid and also in a suspension you will see that some uh, liquid droplet or fine solid particles in a gas okay it will be you know that uh, suspending so that type of droplet liquid droplet or fine solid particles in the air will be called as aerosol that aerosol uh, you know particle size will be within a range of 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 micrometer so here uh, we are having that uh, particles in presence of other particles who those are actually settling down in a suspension uh, slowly so there you will see that there will be a significant interaction between the particles and the 
frictional forces exerted at a given velocity of the particles relative to the fluid which will result the hindering the particle for its you know settling so it will be called as hindered settling okay so hindered settling basically whenever that hindrance will be coming because of that interaction among the particles and also with the fluid in which that it will be suspending okay so in that case the velocity at which it will be settled down it will be very low or it will be you know that hindrance or it will be you know changing because of that hindrance force so that is why it will be called as hindered settling so generally free settling will be always greater than the hindered settling okay free settling velocity i think we have discussed in the previous lectures that what is that free settling velocity which is called as a terminal velocity whereas the hindered settling velocity will be actually the velocity a velocity of the particles in presence of other particles that will be called hindered settling velocity so free settling velocity will be greater than hindered settling velocity here in the slides you will see that some picture here you will see that if you are considering a bass settling operation suppose in a, a small test tube if you are having uh, some you know that muddy water you will see that in the muddy water or slurry or suspension you will see that particles will be gradually you know settling down at the bottom of this you know test tube or column or you will see that in uh, you know real life in a vessel if there is you know that slurry uh, after a certain time or certain days you will see that that uh, muddy particles will be settled down at the bottom so there uh, in this case in a bass uh, some uh, you know slurry will be you know allowed to settle down and uh, after a certain time you will see that solid particles will be you know settle down at a certain uh, velocity okay that is called settling velocity and in that case uh, you will see that solids are suspended in a column or vessel like you will see that generally for waste water treatment you will see that uh, initially that muddy or you know that particulate water uh, that will be allowed in a you know vessel or clarifier you can say where that particulate solid materials will be suspending downward at the bottom and then uh, you know that clarified liquid that will be again a uh, process further uh, for uh, removing other materials so this uh, here you will see that uh, this type of that uh, clarifier are there where that suspended particles uh, you know will be settled down at the bottom with respect to time so upon settling you will see that solids uh, move downward and settle on the bottom of the column due to gravity force so here also you will see that in a small test tube you will see that some uh, slurry or suspended uh, solid particles are allowed to settle down and after certain times you will see that at the top there will be a clarified liquid that means here clear liquid will be coming out where that particles will be you know suspending at the bottom with respect to time but whenever uh, it will be suspending you will see there will be a formation of different concentrated zone at the bottom you will see the very concentrated zone and also at that upper uh, position at different uh, you know concentrated uh, slurry uh, will be shown and with a certain demarcation uh, you know uh, line will be there so it will be called as interface between the concentrated uh, layer of that you know slurry so in that case with respect to time you will see that after a certain time all the particles will be settled down here at the bottom whereas uh, it will leave that clear liquid above its uh, you know settled uh, amount of solid so in this way here there are some you will see that if, if suppose that if you are allowing that uh, suppose a slurry of zinc oxide uh, solution here zinc oxide basically white you will see that uh, if you make that uh, slurry of that zinc oxide what will happen after certain of that uh, zinc oxide will be settled down at the bottom whereas it will be leaving that you know clear liquid at the top okay so basically these are called the bass settling or sedimentation so in case of bass settling you will see that the solids are suspended in a column or vessel and during that settling you will see that the solid will move downward and settle on the bottom of the column due to gravity force now whenever we are uh, going to assess this hindered settling velocity or uh, that efficiency of the process for the settlement of the particles you have to know that what will be the you know viscosity of that slurry and also density of the slurry because this uh, slurry viscosity and uh, 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 slurry density will not be the same as that pure liquid you know viscosity or uh, viscosity or uh, density of the liquid so in that case uh, you have to know what will be the effective viscosity of the slurry you will see that whenever you will add some powder 
in a uh, you know pure liquid what you will see that uh, there will be a formation of slurry and if you uh, keep on increasing the concentration of the you know slurry by uh, adding uh, more powder in the uh, solution you will see that you know that uh, viscosity that means that the solution or slurry will become more sticky as uh, you increase the particle concentration there so that stickiness increase of stickiness will actually uh, give you that indication of that increasing the viscosity of the uh, you know slurry so in that case uh, if you keep on increasing that uh, you know particle concentration the slurry uh, you will get that the change of uh, viscosity will be there or density of the slurry will be changing there so how to you know calculate or how to estimate that viscosity or effective viscosity or you can say that apparent viscosity or you can say actual viscosity of that slurry there so it depends on particle concentration that concentration will be volumetric concentration out of total slurry what will be the volume of particles in that slurry so that will actually change that uh, viscosity of the you know slurry now if you are considering that for a suspension of particles in a fluid the viscosity and density will be represented by the effective suspension viscosity and density will be represented by the effective or average uh, suspension uh, density now in the case of particle concentration in a slurry if you are making a slurry and if you make that uh, slurry concentration volumetric by volume you can say that volume of particles out of total volume of that slurry if you make this you will see that if your you know slurry concentration will be less than 20 percent and uh, low shear stress will be there less than suppose 1 kilo pascal then uh, you can uh, calculate what will be the you know effective viscosity of that you know slurry so that condition that is within a uh, slurry concentration less than 20 percent and low shear stress uh, that is one kilo pascal in that case uh, einstein 196 uh, 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 you know he has given or he has suggested an equation uh, for calculating that effective viscosity of the slurry so it is given here in the slide as equation number one that is mu e mu e is basically what is that effective viscosity of the slurry and uh, this will be is equal to mu f into 1 plus 2.5 epsilon p here mu f is basically the viscosity of the of your fluid and 1 plus 2.5 epsilon p epsilon p is basically the volumetric concentration of the particles in the slurry okay so here we can write here simply then mu f into function of epsilon p this is basically 1 plus 2 point epsilon p is a function of epsilon p epsilon p is basically what that particulate concentration in the slurry by volume so here a function of epsilon p that will be equal to 1 plus 2.5 epsilon p as convenient we are considering it is a function of epsilon p whereas this epsilon f is equal to 1 minus epsilon p so epsilon p in terms of you know volumetric uh, concentration of fluid that will be you know 1 minus epsilon f and in case of uh, you know particle concentration greater than 20 percent and also higher shear stress if you are considering if it is greater than 1 kilo pascal the relative viscosity or effective viscosity of that slurry given by Kitano et al from which you know you can calculate it so Kitano et al uh, suggested a correlation based on which you can calculate what will be the effective viscosity if your suspension concentration or slurry concentration is greater than 20 percent and shear stress is greater than 1 kilo pascal so in that case uh, we can represent that mu e will be equal to mu f into 1 minus epsilon p by 0 0.68 whole to the power minus 2 so this is the correlation that is developed by Kitano et al 1981 so as per their suggested correlation you can easily calculate what will be the effective viscosity for the you know slurry whose concentration will be greater than 20 percent so here again we can you know express this you know as a function uh, like mu f into f dash into epsilon p here f dash is basically 1 minus epsilon p by 0 0.68 whole to the power minus 2 so by this equation number 2 you can easily calculate what will be the slurry viscosity and then average suspension density or effective suspension density that will be again depending on that you know particle concentration so average density can be you know calculated by this equation here 
this is epsilon f rho f plus 1 minus epsilon f uh, into rho p. Here rho f is basically the fluid density and rho p is the particle density or you can express here 1 minus epsilon p into rho f plus epsilon p into rho p because here 1 minus epsilon p that will be equal to epsilon f ok. So, this is the uh, equation based on which you can easily calculate suspension viscosity. Then we are coming to the point that whenever the particles will be falling downward or settling downward you will see there will be a drug force acting on the particles. Now for that what will be the you know drag force in this case uh, you cannot consider the pure liquid here instead of liquid you have to consider the slurry whose viscosity and average density will be different from the pure viscosity and density ok. So in that case what should be that drag force so in that case drag force will be is equal to as per definition whatever earlier definition was there so fd will be is equal to what cd into you know projectional area into rho u square by you know 2. So in the in the case of you know slurry in that case you have to consider that rho rho to be considered as a rho average and you will see that u velocity u that means uh, you know uh, particle at which that uh, it will be you know settling down. So, it will be relative velocity uh, instead of that absolute velocity in absence of particles. So, here u relative will be there instead of u ok and also other things that will be uh, there even if mu will be mu effective there. So, in that case uh, drag force will be is equal to this you know cd into uh, 1 by 4 pi dp square into half rho average into u, uh, u relative square. So, from this equation number 5 you can calculate what will be the drag force. So, to calculate the drag force you need cd value. cd is what? cd is the drag coefficient. So, drag coefficient again you can calculate based on that flow regimes that already we have discussed in the previous lecture. So, in that case in the Stokes uh, flow regime or Stokes law regime you can say that. So, here in that case Cd will be is equal to 24 by Rep. So, that will be equal to 24 by uh, you know rho average dp u relative divided by mu e. So, here instead of pure liquid viscosity and density you have to consider that average or effective viscosity and density of the liquid here ok. So, here instead of liquid it will be considered as a slurry. Okay. So, here by this uh, you can easily calculate what will be the drag coefficient and drag force. Now, under terminal velocity conditions where there will be no you know acceleration force for a particle falling under gravity in a suspension that means in presence of other particles and interacting with the other particles the force balance how it will be there. In the same way that we have discussed for the terminal velocity in absence of other particles that will be equal to gravity force minus buoyancy force minus drag force that will be equal to acceleration force. So, in this case drag force will be equal to pi by 6 dp cube into rho p into z and buoyancy force will be pi dp cube by 6 that means your this is volume into you know that density of the here slurry not pure liquid density ok. So, average density to be considered into z and then drag force will be cd into pi uh, dp square by 4 and half into you know rho average u relative square. Here instead of you know terminal velocity ut we are considering here u real u r e l means relative velocity of that particles. So, after simplification from this equation it becomes cd into pi dp square by 4 into half rho average u real square and then uh, pi dp cube by 6 into you know that rho p minus rho average into z which results after substitution of cd is equal to 24 by re from equation number 4 earlier. So, finally, that equation number 6 will becomes that u relative that means relative velocity will be equal to rho p minus rho average into dp square into z divided by 18 mu here mu will be mu e and rho liquid will be rho average but particle density will be same. So, this is the 
uh, equation based on which you can calculate what will be the relative velocity of the particles in presence of other particles or velocity of the particles when it, uh, it will be flowing downward under gravity in a suspension. Then substituting uh, for average density here you will see that we are getting here average density rho average. Now what will be the rho average value that we have already given the equation for that rho average value here rho average value by equation number 3. So, if you substitute this rho average value and the effective viscosity that is given earlier also that either 1 or 2 if you substitute that you know uh, viscosity ok. So, here uh, rho average and rho mu uh, e that means the effective viscosity of the suspension we obtain the following expression here for terminal falling velocity for a particle in a suspension ok. So, it will be here u relative but comma t we are we are giving t here this is the terminal velocity of that particle in presence of other particle that means in a suspension not in a pure liquid ok or in a absence of particles it is not there only it is a relative velocity or you can say that terminal falling velocity for a particle in a suspension. So, it will be rho p minus rho f to dp square g by 18 mu into function of epsilon p into epsilon f. So, this function of epsilon p that will be you know that based on that either that concentration will be greater than 20 percent or less than 20 percent according to that function of epsilon p will be here. Now, the velocity u uh, t is uh, here uh, u r e l t is called particle settling velocity in the presence of other particles or the hindered settling velocity. So, this is your basically hindered settling velocity. Now, comparing this with the expression for the terminal velocity of a single particle in a fluid we can get here equation number 9. Here from this equation number 8 we are just going to substitute the value of ut ok. Then we can express from this uh, equation number 8 then uh, we are having this uh, expression uh, here in terms of terminal velocity of a single particle. So, u r e l t that will be equal to u t into epsilon f divided by function of epsilon p ok. So, this is the interesting you know equation uh, that what will be the relation between that hindered settling velocity and the terminal uh, velocity of the single particle. So, this equation number will give you the answer. So, the settling velocity of a particles tend to decrease steadily as the concentration of the suspension increased. If your particle concentration increase what will happen that settling velocity of the particles will decrease. This is simple that can be understood from this equation number 9 ok. So, here uh, whereas this u t value already uh, we have uh, derived in previous uh, lecture there. So, u t will be equal to rho p minus rho f into dp square g by 18 mu. Now, coming to the point here base settling or sedimentation. So, before going to that some terms we have to know here what is superficial fluid velocity, what is uh, superficial particle velocity, flow area occupied by the fluid, flow area occupied by the particles, what is the actual velocity of the fluid, what will be the actual velocity of the particles, how it will be defined ok. So, all those things will be you know uh, known to you. So, let us consider the superficial fluid velocity. What do you mean by superficial fluid velocity? Whenever fluid will be flowing through a conduit ok only single fluid whenever it will be flowing. So, in that case the volumetric flow rate divided by the total cross sectional area of the conduit it will be called as superficial fluid velocity. So, u f s that means superficial fluid velocity here f for fluid s for you know superficial. So, u f s that means superficial fluid velocity that will be equal to what will be the volumetric flow rate of fluid divided by cross sectional area cross sectional area what is that cross section through which that fluid will be flowing. If it is flowing through the column then cross sectional area of the column. If you if it is flowing through the pipe then cross sectional area of the pipe ok. In this case you will see that that what will be the cross sectional area will be occupied by the fluid that will be considered ok. So, that is why that superficial fluid velocity basically that the superficial velocity based on that you know empty vessel cross sectional area. Okay. 
so here so whenever any fluid flowing through the uh, you know conduit or pipe or column in that case the what would be the volumetric flow rate divided by that you know cross sectional area of that column or conduit that will be represented as superficial fluid velocity similarly superficial particle velocity if only particle is flowing at a volumetric flow rate of qp then if you divided by that cross sectional area it will be regarded as superficial particle velocity now whenever the particle and fluid both will be flowing through the conduit simultaneously in that case each of the phase like fluid and particle will not have the same cross sectional area okay it may be changed the cross sectional area that will be occupied by the fluid and cross sectional area occupied by the you know solid particles will not be same there will be a different cross sectional area that they will occupy of course there because total cross sectional area will be remain same so whenever any pipe you are using and through that pipe suppose liquid and solid both will be flowing then some cross sectional will be occupied by the fluid some cross sectional area will be occupied by the solid so in that case what fraction of the cross sectional area will be occupied by the fluid so that will be actually what will be the volume fraction of the fluid that will give you what will be the fractional area occupied by the fluid so that can be uh, written by equation number 13 here af will be equal to epsilon f into a af is what that fractional cross sectional area occupied by the fluid that will be equal to epsilon f into a capital a is the total cross sectional area and then flow area that is occupied by the particles that will be equal to aap that will be equal to epsilon p into a so again since epsilon p is equal to 1 minus epsilon f so we can write ap will be equal to 1 minus epsilon f into a now in this case what will be the actual velocity of the fluid now this actual velocity of the fluid will be based on the actual cross sectional area is occupied by that fluid so here uh, we can say that this u f actual that means actual fluid velocity u f a a for actual that will be is equal to what that q f divided by a means what here actual flow area of the fluid will be equal to a f so it will be q f by a f so it will be here actual velocity of fluid so this is basically q f divided by a f means what epsilon f into a now if we have that q f by a then into epsilon f so this q f by a will be called as u f s that is superficial velocity of the fluid divided by then epsilon f so actual velocity we are having actual velocity we are having here is equal to superficial velocity divided by you know volume fraction of that you know phases so actual fluid velocity will be equal to superficial fluid velocity divided by volume fraction of the fluid similarly actual velocity of the particle will be equal to superficial you know particle velocity divided by its volume fraction so in this case one important thing that you have to remember that actual velocity always will be greater than superficial velocity because here the cross sectional area what is occupied by the fluid or solid will be less than the total or you know that total cross sectional area so in that case uh, since the cross sectional area will be you know less than the total cross sectional area its velocity of course will be increased so in that case we are having that actual velocity of the phase will be greater than superficial velocity of the phase now as per continuity equation we will see that then q f can be written as u f s into a that will be equal to u f a into a into epsilon f and for the particle similarly you know q p will be equal to u p s a is equal to u p a a into 1 minus epsilon f so this will be your you know simple what will be the volumetric flow rate of the fluid and what will be the actual velocity of the fluid this is the relationship similarly for the volumetric flow rate of the particle with the 
actual velocity of the particle how it will be related. Next we are coming here that settling flux as a function of suspension concentration. Here you will see that whenever particles will be falling downward that will be a certain rate. At a certain rate it will be falling downward. Now if we consider that a mass of solid in suspension are allowed to settle say in measuring cylinder as shown in the picture in the laboratory there is no net flow through the vessel. There is no net flow through the vessel because here the slurry will not be coming out from the vessel all the slurry will remain there whereas at the same time the particles will be settling downward. So here liquid will not be flowing whereas particles will be flowing. So in that case we are having here total flow will be 0. So that is why you can say that there will be no net flow through the vessel that is why you can write here equation number 18 as qf plus qp will be equal to 0. Now what will be the qf? qf is basically that here this uf epsilon f into a so this is your qf similarly what is qp that will be equal to upa into 1 minus epsilon f into a now a will be cancelled out so we can simply write here uf a epsilon f plus upa into 1 minus epsilon f that will be equal to 0 so from which we can have after simplification uf a will be equal to minus upa into 1 minus epsilon f by epsilon f. So, in this way we can you know have the relationship between actual velocity of the fluid in terms of you know that uh, actual velocity of the particle and also volume fraction of the particles or fluid. Here you will see that in the picture it is shown that in a test tube uh, the slurry or suspension is allowed to settle down you will see that with respect to time the particles will be settled down and after a certain time you will see that the all the particles will be settled here ok and uh, you know giving the clear liquid above it. Now you will see that during that you know settlement with respect to time here with respect to time it will be happened and here you will see that the concentration level of that particles will be changing or you can say that actual velocity of that particles will be changing that depends on that you know particle concentration. So, here initially you will see that all the slurry can be represented by B at this stage and with respect to time whenever it will come after some time you will see that that slurry will be suspending and the solid particles will be suspending and at the bottom the small amount of solid will be depositing whereas above it there will be a you know concentrated layer of that slurry and above which there will be a clear liquid. Now you will see that at this uh, you know zone B there will be a again division of that uh, layer of this you know zone B as per the particle concentration and after certain time again this uh, you know zone will be reducing just you know allowing or keeping that clarified zone above it whereas the bottom zone that uh, settled zone will be increasing because more the particles will be settled down at the bottom here with respect to time and at the end you will see that when all the particles will be settled down only this you know that settling zone will be uh, forming just uh, uh, leaving that you know clarified zone above it ok. So, it is happening with respect to time. So, during that settlement there will be a you know particle flux you can say that particle flux means here the particle will be falling down with respect to certain velocity with respect to time and also as per that cross sectional area. So, that is why it will be called as a flux. Then in hindered settling under gravity the relative velocity between the particles and the fluid that we know that whenever that particles will be flowing downward what will be the relative velocity then it will be upa minus up ufa this is the actual velocity difference between actual velocity of particles and fluid. So, that will be regarded as u relative t that means hindered settling velocity. Here in this case ufa may be you know that 0 but in some cases you will see the slurry also will be moving upward whereas the particles will be going downward. So, in that case that ufa to be considered there ok. So, here we can say that it is basically the ut into epsilon f by function of epsilon p. So, after substitution of 
u f a value here u f a value that will be in terms of you know by equation number 20 in terms of u p a we are having this equation number you know 22 here after substitution of u f a here and simplifying we can get that u p a that means uh, actual particle velocity in the vessel it will be u t into epsilon f square by function of epsilon p and now this is this you can say that equation number 22 this is basically that u p a is the actual you know that settling velocity or hindered settling velocity in a vessel and which is again a function of you know that fluid volume fraction or particle volume fraction you can say and also the terminal velocity of the of the single particles in the absence of other particles. So, here from this equation number 22 you can easily calculate what will be the you know hindered settling velocity and how is it related to the terminal velocity of the single particle in a particle free liquid. Then uh, based on this observation uh, uh, researcher and Jackie they have made one uh, relationship for the hindered settling velocity uh, as a function of fluid volume fraction. Uh, and also uh, they uh, have you know uh, suggested this uh, relationship that will be non-linear relationship like this equation number 23 that means u p a will be equal to u t into epsilon f to the power n where n is called the research on Jackie hindered settling index. Now for uniform sphere that is forming a suspension of a particle volume fraction less than 10 percent by volume n will be equal to 2.5. So, as per their observation from their experimental observation, they actually made this relationship. Here, they have you know correlated these things with the you know free terminal velocity of the particles. So, u p a that will be equal to u t into epsilon f to the power n. Whereas, from the derivation, we obtain this that u p a will be equal to u t here, uh, u p a will be equal to u t into uh, epsilon f square by function of epsilon p. So, this is basically a this is a function of epsilon p. So, that is why we can write here this equation u p a is equal to u t into epsilon f to the power n or you can say that u t into 1 minus epsilon f whole to the power n like this. So, this is will be your u p a hindered settling. So, n is called you know research on Jackie hindered settling index and this n will be equal to 2.5 when the particle concentration will be less than 10 percent by volume. And uh, for any flow regime Khan and research on 1989 recommend the use of the following correlation here as shown in the equation 24 to calculate the exponent n that is Jackie uh, research on uh, index n over the entire range of Reynolds number. So, they have given this correlation 24 from which you can easily calculate what will be the you know uh, hindered settling uh, index n this n value. So, this is basically 4.8 minus n divided by n minus 2.4 that will be equal to 0 0.043 Archimedes number to the power 0 0.57 into 1 minus 2.4 into dp by dc whole to the power 0 0.27 where Archimedes number is defined as dp cube rho f into rho p minus rho f into z by mu square. Here dp is the particle diameter and dc is the vessel of tube diameter, vessel or tube diameter. So, in this case uh, we can you know calculate what will be the value of n in the general case for the entire range of Reynolds number. Okay. Next, uh, we can say that if we are having this uh, you know u p a s will be equal to u p a into 1 minus epsilon f that relationships that already we have derived here uh, that what will be the superficial uh, particle velocity how it is related to the actual particle velocity that earlier we have uh, you know given here in this uh, slide uh, in equation number I think uh, yeah in this case equation number 16 we have given that relationship actual velocity how it is related with the superficial velocity. Now, if we substitute that you know u p a value here for this u p a value that will be u t into 1 minus epsilon f into epsilon f to the power n. So, this uh, you know after substitution we are getting this equation number 26. So, from this equation we can write u p s by u t 
that will be equal to 1 minus epsilon f into epsilon f to the power n or we can write epsilon p into 1 minus epsilon p whole to the power n like this. So, here if we plot this equation okay, in, uh, in a graph where uh, x axis will be equal to 1 minus epsilon f or epsilon p and in y axis it will be you know that uh, ratio of this superficial particle velocity to the terminal velocity of the single particle then we can have this type of profile here okay this type of profile here so in this case you will get some maximum value maximum value of this ups by ut this ratio and also there will be some inflection point at which that uh, concentration layer will be changing okay from this upper layer to the lower layer here as per that uh, particulate concentration or uh, particle concentration will be changing during that settlement so what will be the maximum point at which that maximum you know uh, ups by ut value we can get so that maximum will be there after you know getting derivation of this ups by ut with respect to epsilon f then we can get that maximum uh, value will be at 1 minus epsilon f will be equal to 1 by n plus 1 and that inflection point will be happened 1 minus epsilon f is equal to 2 by n plus 1. So, here in this case uh, we can get this uh, you know maximum or inflection point just by taking first and second derivatives of the equation 27 which will give you the plot of dimensionless particle settling flux versus suspension volumetric concentration uh, 1 minus epsilon f with this value of uh, that 1 by n plus 1 for the maxima and 2 by n plus 1 for the you know inflection point ok. So, this is basically the representation of that you know solid flux during the settling relative to that uh, terminal velocity and how it will be you know changing with respect to that particle concentration that can be represented by this uh, you know plot. Now, let us do an example based on this you know observation of that hindered settling velocity. Here uh, let us consider that a 30 percent by volume suspension of uh, spherical sand particles in a viscous oil has a hindered settling velocity of 4.44 micrometer per second. If the research on Jackie uh, hindered setting index is 4.5 then what is the terminal velocity of the sand grain there. So, this problem is given in gate 2000s there. So, let us solve this uh, problem as per whatever we have learned here for this hindered setting velocity. Now, uh, we know that according to research on Jackie relationship the general equation for hindered settling velocity can be expressed by this equation here u p a will be equal to u t into epsilon f to the power n is equal to u t into 1 minus epsilon p to the power n. So, here uh, as per problem here u p a that means uh, hindered settling velocity is given to you that is 4.44 micrometer per second. So, here u p a will be equal to 4.44 and u t value that you have to find out that uh, your problem is what is the terminal velocity of the sand grain. So, terminal velocity to be found and then epsilon p value is given to you. What is that epsilon p value? 30 percent by volume it is given to you. So, here epsilon p is equal to 0 0.30. So, after substitution of this u p a and epsilon p and solving uh, we can get here uh, u t will be equal to 22.10 micrometer per second. So, based on this you know example we can understand how to calculate what will the settling velocity in a suspension. Then another uh, concept that uh, concentration of interface in sedimentation whenever particles will be falling downward in the vessel you will see that the sedimentation of that particles will happen you will see that there will be a formation of interface that means there will be some layer some demarcation point of concentration layer. So, you will see that with respect to time whenever settle down that particles will be settled down the concentration in one layer will not be same as the you know upper layer or it from its you know downward layer. As per you know uh, shown in the picture here you will see if you consider any layer here ok. So, above this layer the concentration of the particles here will not be same what will be the concentration of the you know solid here ok. So, there will be a difference. So, let us consider that concentration at this layer of this you know interface is C1 
and below this interface the concentration is C2. What is that concentration? Basically for uh, convenience we are considering C1 and C2 instead of epsilon P1 or epsilon P2. Okay. This is basically epsilon P particle concentration C. So, defining the symbol C to represent the particle volume fraction that is C that is epsilon P this is basically 1 minus epsilon F. So, whenever this settling down there you will see that there will be some interface that interface will be forming because of that concentration difference okay, below and above this layer. So, consider the suspension of concentration C1 containing particles settling at a velocity up a1 and the suspension of concentration C2 which is you know settling down at a velocity up a2 and during that you know sedimentation this you know demarcation layer or you can say the interface between this concentrated layer that will be also you know moving downward. So, that interface movement at which velocity it will be called as interface velocity. So, it will be represented by u interface. So, the interface is falling at a velocity u interface. The mass balance over the interface now can be done. What will be that mass balance? So, you will see that mass balance over the interface gives u p a 1 minus u interface into C1 that will be equal to u p a 2 minus u interface into C2. You will see that what will be the total solid here at this at this zone here if you multiply by a that means cross sectional area then you will see that a into u p a minus u interface that will give you the relative particle volume flow rate at which it will be going downward then into concentration that means concentration C1 that means volume fraction of that particles that will give you the total amount of particles at this layer which is going downward. Similarly, for this layer or zone we can say that the U P A2 minus U interface into C2 the same amount of solid will be coming downward. So, this will be the balance of that particles you know what this interface the mass above and below the interface will remain same. So, this is the mass balance you can say. Okay. Now, the interface is falling at a velocity u interface and the mass balance will be given by equation number 20. Now, you may ask why then mass balance is the volume balance. Now, if you multiply its density of course, it will be the you know mass balance. So, here volume and cross sectional density and cross sectional will be you know cancelled out from both sides. So, that is why the final equation is coming like this. Then after this from equation number 28 we can you know give the simplified form or other way that what will be the u interface that u interface that means interface velocity will be equal to u p a 1 to c 1 minus u p 2 into c 2 by c 1 minus c 2. Okay? So, in this case since u p a c 1 u p a c is particle volume metric flux that can be represented by UPS. Then we can write UPS will be equal to UPA1 to C1 or uh, UPA1 into epsilon P1 or we can say like that you know UPA1 into 1 minus epsilon F1. Similarly, UPS2 that will be UPA2 into C2 that will be the UPA2 into epsilon P2 is equal to UPA2 into 1 minus epsilon F2. So, mass above and below the interface will remain same that is why you can write your interface by this equation by mass balance and here from this equation number 29 just we are substituting this u p a 1 into c 1 as a u p s 1 by equation number 30. Again u p a 2 into c 2 that can be replaced by u p s 2 by equation number 30 divided by c 1 minus c 2. So, this is basically the difference in u p s by difference in concentration. When this concentration will tends to 0, then we will give you the derivative forms of u interface will be equal to du p s by d c as 32 equation number 32. Okay? So, this uh, you know interface how it will be changing and also that uh, what will be the you know solid flux with respect to concentration change 
how it can be represented. This graph will give you the representation of this you know UPS how it will be changing with respect to concentration. This yellow line will give you the profile. Now you will see that interface that is basically the slope that slope will give you the velocity of the layer of concentration or interface you can say. So in this case uh, slope you will see that if we consider any point here this point from this graph it will give you the C2 and then UPS2 then what will be the joining line here and this line will give you that the slope will be giving you that you interface 1 and 2 between 1 and 2 layer and velocity of interface between clear liquid that is C1 will be equals to 0 and the suspension of concentration C2. Similarly this slope will be giving you U interface 2, 3 here this concentration C2 and C3 here that means your velocity of interface between suspension concentration C2 and the settled bed of concentration C3 ok. So in this case uh, we are having you know slope as well as you know that interface uh, velocity from that slope ok. The slope of a chord joining two points at concentration C1 and C2 is the velocity of interface between suspension of these two concentrations. So this is the main concept from this you know the solid flux versus concentration from which you can get this. Now let us do an example for this ok. Suppose a suspension in water of uniformly sized sphere whose diameter is 50 micrometer density of 1530 kg per meter cube has a solid concentration of 20 percent by volume. The suspension settles to a bed of solids concentration of 50 percent by volume. Now in this case you have to calculate what will be the rate at which the water suspension interface settles and the rate at which the sediment or suspension interface rises assume water properties as density is 1000 kg per meter cube and viscosity 0.001 pascal second. So, this is your problem that you have to find out the interface velocity. So, how can we solve this uh, problem? So, let us consider that case A. In that case solid concentration of initial suspension is given to you this is 20 percent and as per equation 29 that we have uh, described. So, that will allow you to calculate the velocity of interface between the suspension of different concentrations. Okay? Now the velocity of the interface between initial suspension B and the clear liquid A interface we can have here uh, this U interface AB will be equal to UPAA CA minus UPB into CB by CA minus CB ok. So here equation number 29 as per you know uh, just uh, see your slide that uh, yeah this is equation number 29 ok. So from this equation number 29 we are having this equation ok. Now since here this as per problem CA will be equal to 0 the equation reduces to U interface AB will be equal to UPAB. Now UPAB is the hindered settling velocity of the particles relative to the vessel wall in vessel settling and given by equation number 23 earlier that we have given. So UPA will be equal to UT into epsilon f to the power n. So, assuming Stokes law applies then n will be equal to what 4.65 and single particle terminal velocity can be calculated by this equation. So, we know now the single particle terminal velocity and epsilon f. So, from which we can get this UPB value. So, which will be equal to 2.56 into 10 to the minus 4 meter per second. Okay. Now, in this case you have to check whether that we have considered here what is the uh, n value that is as per Stokes uh, law applies then this n value Jackie uh, research on hinder settling index that will be equal to 4.65 whether it is coming this uh, Stokes flow regime or not. So, for that you have to calculate what will be the Reynolds number. So, as per that Reynolds number in terms of uh, terminal velocity of the particles then we are getting 0 0.055. So, which is uh, coming less than the limiting value for Stokes law that is 0 0.3 less than 0 0.2 we can say and so the assumption is valid. So, hence we can say that uh, interfacial or interface velocity between the uh, initial suspension and the clear liquid will be equal to 0 0.256 uh, millimeter per second uh, and the fact that the velocity is positive here indicates that the interface is moving downward there.
Now case B, you will see that here again we apply the equation 29 to calculate the velocity of the interface between suspension and different concentrations. Now the velocity of the interface between initial suspension B and the sediment here it will be considered. So in that case UPAB CB minus UPS CS divided by CB minus CS, S for here settlement that is sediment here you can say. So, in this case CB value is known to you, CS value also known to you, it is given to you and since the velocity of the sediment here UPS will be equal to 0 here. So, U interface BS will be only this part. Okay? So, that means here UPAB into 0 0.20 here this part will be equal to 0 divided by 0 0.20 minus 0 0.50. So, it is coming here negative of 0 0.67 UPAB. And from this part A, we know that UPAB will be equal to 0 0.256 millimeter per second. So, U interface BS here after substitution of UPABS here, it will uh, give you that minus 0 0.171 millimeter per second. So, in this case negative value will be coming. This negative sign signifies that the interface is moving upward. So, the interface between initial suspension and sediment is moving upwards at a velocity of 0 0.171 millimeter per second. I think you understood this uh, you know problem how to calculate the interface movement at a certain velocity based on this equation. I think you understood the you know uh, concept of this you know uh, hindered settling velocity in presence of uh, particles and how is it related to the terminal velocity whenever particles will be falling freely. Uh, at its terminal velocity and also how that uh, you know uh, hindered settling velocity will be related to the uh, free uh, settling velocity and also particle concentration. Okay? And how that interface uh, of this uh, two layers of that you know sediment uh, in a particular vessel or column it will be changing or going downward uh, uh, and how that you know uh, flux of that solid particle sedimentation uh, will be changing with respect to uh, you know concentration of the particle of the slurry that will affect that you know uh, sedimentation efficiency or uh, particle separation you can say. So, uh, thank you for your uh, attention. In the next lecture we will uh, try to discuss another module. This is basically the flow through uh, granular bed. So, in that case we will try to uh, learn something basic law and terminology of that flow through granular bed in the next lecture. Thank you. Have a nice day.